Dr. Barbara Moore said yesterday she intends to start a 1,000-mile walk from John O'Groats to Land's End. She added that she had been invited to give a series of lectures. The subject of her lectures would be how not to be tired at any age. I want to tell people what real vitality is, how to maintain it, and how to possess it. Dawn start for Dr. Moore. Dr. Babs to walk length of Britain. Babs is off. Best of luck, Dr. Moore. Best of luck. It's Bravo Barbara. Dr. Barbara makes it. Dr. Babs is there. What a fantastic, frightening, triumphant procession. As 56-year-old Dr. Barbara Moore reaches Land's End, journey's end on her thousand-mile march from John O'Groats, a mass of... 1,000 cars and 20,000 people stampeded, flashed, honked and roared on the wild black cliff edge as she came in. It was a sprint finish, a finish that was greeted by rockets, fireworks, cheers, flag-waving and honking motor cars. It had taken her 23 days. She drank a glass of carrot and lettuce juice to celebrate. Harry Moore's family, schoolmaster father, French mother, had disapproved of his marriage. They thought that Barbara, being Russian, must be a communist. He overrode family objections, married the dynamic Barbara in Fulham Registry Office in 1939. I've never seen my family since, Harry said. That is the price I paid for Barbara. Are you all right, Barbara? Dear? When are you going to come see me? I'll pay the fare. <laughs> Unless you'd rather walk. Dr. Barbara Moore died today in a London hospital where she'd been taken despite her protests. 
After an extraordinary and eccentric life, the marathon walker and health fanatic who said she would have a baby when she was 100 and lived to be 150 has died at 72 after deciding to commit suicide by starving herself to death. She had shrunken to a mere skeleton and was barely recognizable as the woman who had once strode so exuberantly across the world. Dr. Moore had devoted her life and career to proving her theory that nutrition was the key to a long, vigorous and healthy life. Don't you think you should rest? It is all right. <clears throat> if people did not drive, they would not hit me with their cars. <laughs> what is so strange about walking? Why do people drive by and look out of their cars and make ludicrous signs? It should be possible to walk along a road without I people... I still think you should rest. <laughs> You have proved yourself. To be right. Yeah. All the people doing it now, you see? Yeah. All the people doing it now because I have done it. And got your name. In the papers. Young men. Trained army marchers. Half my years. All of them. Doing it for prize money. <laughs> All because somebody said... Carriage proprietor. Beat Barbara Moore. Dr. Babs. And win money. I have nothing to prove. No, dear. Not a thing do I have to prove. But I must tell the world. That you are right. I am. Yes, dear. I must tell the world that what I have done is right and that the way I have done it is right. Dr. Moore going strongly. Babs striding out. Dr. Moore, lively and full of beats. Break up. One, two, three. Wow! Dr. Moore, who has walked 120 miles since he left John O'Groats on Wednesday, addressed a meeting of wolf cubs after she arrived at Dingwall last night. She told them about her great walk. She set out very early in the morning after breakfasting on lettuce, grated carrots, turnips and oranges. Before leaving, she dressed her injured ankle. Yeah, an injunction was made on July the 28th, 1961, restraining Dr. Moore from interfering with General Buchanan's passage over the forecourt of the property. Has it proved effective? No, my lord. In fact, the barrier was not removed until August the 1st, when General Buchanan, in the presence of his solicitor and a police officer, exercised his right to abate the nuisance. Which consisted of? Removing the barrier himself. I see. And then? Stones and tubs were promptly put back. By who? By Dr. Moore, my lord.
Mr. Alex Taylor, the Lanarkshire Road Safety Organiser, handed Dr. Moore a jacket in linen bearing the slogan in scarlet letters, Walk on the right of the road. In spite of this, and the several copies of the Highway Code which he'd been given, Dr. Moore insists on keeping to the left. I decided to buy Eastley Cotter's place of quiet seclusion, so I could do my work. Work connected with your marathon walking? No, my lord, that is not so. But it was these exploits, was it not, that made you famous? It is of no importance. Very well. Please continue, Dr. Moore. I paid three-fifths of the price. My husband and the defendant paid one-fifth. My husband and the defendant have their own part of the property. Uh, a moment. A separate part of the property? Yes. Your husband and you? Yes, my lord. We do not eat together or sleep together. Is that not a trifle unusual? We choose it as a way of life. We are happy about it. Yes, pray continue. And they both have right of way over the forecourt. Do they? It is my possession. Ah. But that is all they have. The right to pass over the forecourt. They are not allowed to park or wash their cars on it. <laughs> but you're not suggesting that your husband... I mean... Uh, no, my lord. He adheres strictly to the terms. I see. But the defendant, even though he understands this, has from the very beginning, 18 months ago, usurped my just rights. I was born with strength, born with will. Decisions are inviolate, invulnerable. They are my destiny. Dr. Moore says she owes it all to uh, lettuce leaves, tomato juice, and from time to time a good nourishing swig of orange and honey. Uh, indeed, the uh, banana shippers and honey spread men, not to mention the makers of uh, seven leaf plimsolls and indestructible socks, have recognized in Dr. Moore their own personal evangelist. Dr. Moore, well, what do you think about? What? Uh, when you're walking along. No, oh, my miseries. <laughs> uh, what speed do you do? What? When you're walking, do your feet hurt? <laughs> do you uh, eat apples when you're walking along? I is it true uh, that you live on fruit juices, uh, nuts and lettuce leaves? Yes, mainly fruit and vegetable juices. For how long? Oh, how long? Have you been living on fruit juices, nuts and lettuce leaves? Six, seven years. <laughs> Don't you miss proper food? Did you change your eating habits uh, just like that, I mean, overnight? I eliminated conventional foods from my diet gradually over a period of 26, 27 years. Oh, right, and... Um, and what... air. Pardon? I live on air. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, I meant food. So did I. Soon I will stop eating fruit and vegetable juices and live on air alone. Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand. It's perfectly simple to understand. I live on air. Nothing but air. I've done it already. Two or three months at a time. You've done it? In the mountains, yes. Ah, the mountains, yes. Uh, isn't that when you got ill? Pardon? Uh, didn't you get very ill, nearly died, in the mountains? Uh, in Austria, wasn't it, Dr Moore? <laughs> what are you trying to prove, Dr Moore? Nothing. I mean, this war... I have this... nothing to prove. What makes you think you are right and everyone else is wrong? You are a man, no? Yes. I am a weak woman. You are how much? Uh, pardon? In years. 24. I am 56. <laughs> you are trying to prove something. My mission is to tell the world, to tell ordinary people, that there is more to life, there must be more to life, than eating meat, drinking beer, smoking, playing darts, Satisfying the physical appetites. You see, 
Right. The stones in the flower pots did not, in point of fact, interfere with Mr. Buchanan's... General Buchanan's right of access. I have put them there only to protect myself from intrusions upon my property. General Buchanan is a man who is used to ordering people about. And I will not be ordered about. The question now is what is to be done? I'm not at all anxious to make an order committing you to prison, and I will not do so if it can be avoided. I will give you ten minutes to consider whether you will remove the stones and pots. My lord, I love my freedom as much as anybody else. Perhaps it's only a Russian can. But I would rather go to prison. Dr. Moore has taken a silly attitude and has committed a breach of the order. There is obviously an intention to continue in that breach. The order will be made that she shall be committed to prison for contempt of court. The order is made very reluctantly. Dr. Babs begins death fast. Marathon walker Dr. Barbara Moore is on a fast until death in Holloway Jail. Medical officers kept watch over the 59-year-old Russian-born doctor as she grew weaker last night. Dr. Moore, famed for her fantastic walks on a vegetable juice diet, has refused to eat since Tuesday when she was jailed for contempt of court. Sex and character by Otto Weininger was the most important book I ever read. He condemned sex. Young girl as I was, I knew he was right. Don't ask me how I knew, but I knew that it was brutal and animal. Husband begs her to eat. Last night, her 50-year-old husband, sculptor Harry Moore, told me... I can't persuade her to change her mind. I don't think there's any hope. She's not eating nor drinking. I visited her at the prison last night and pleaded with her, but she just told me to save my breath. I know she'll go through with it. Once she makes up her mind, she won't budge. They thought I was a foreign agent. A foreign agent, a spy. After the revolution, Harry, that's what they thought. Because I was an aristocrat. Because I knew Westerners. I ask you, Harry, could I help my aristocratic background? No, dear. Could I say to my father and my mother, change what you are, because one day there will be a revolution and you will be accused of being a foreign agent. Could I do that? No, dear. To my father and my mother, Harry. As for working with Westerners, Stupid. Stupid. I was working in a hospital. I was a medical student. After the revolution, all the hospitals were run by Westerners. All the doctors were dead. How could I help consorting with Westerners? But still they followed me, watched me, arrested me. Stupid. I was a young girl. <coughs> the night he came to life, Harry. <laughs> Have I told you? We were collecting bodies from the snow, from the deep, drifting snow. You've no idea what a Russian winter is like, Harry. No idea. They'd been killed in the fighting. And we, we young people from the hospital, were digging out the bodies, loading them on the cart, taking them to the morgue, stripping them of their clothes, laying them on the large slabs on the white sheets. And one night, one night I was alone in that big room full of the slabs 
the bodies, a young girl, you know. And I heard a noise, a loud noise from that room, full of bodies. And I turned, and there, standing behind me, was a huge, naked man. A huge, white, naked man, a man we had brought back ten minutes before from the snow, stripped of his clothes, laid on the slab, ready for burning. And this huge, naked man, back from the dead, smiled at me and walked towards me. And perhaps it was the warmth, the heat, but his maleness was... You know, he was... <laughs> There's food, dear, in the bag. Then I met the most wonderful man in the world. Right. The most wonderful man in the world. Alexander Patalaev. Patalaev. A young engineer. A young genius. Yeah. A big man in every way. Tall. Handsome. Straight as a tree. With enormous eyes. And a clean, clear complexion. Very frugal. Caring nothing for money. No. Nothing. Interested only in his work. His engineering work. His motto? To, to live, live for, for others. others. Yes. Didn't drink, didn't smoke. Not interested in sex. No. A god, Harry. A tall, clean god. If I could meet with Patelayev again, work with Patelayev again, what a wonderful team we would make. Yeah. World beaters. I'll put this food in. Harry. When I met him, he was not completely perfect. No. He had one bad habit. <laughs> he liked to eat meat. But it was not long before I made him see the light. <laughs> After knowing me, he never ate meat again. World beaters. Dr. Moore was transferred from Holloway Prison to the Whittington Hospital Highgate last Friday evening. Her health is causing concern. I hope there is a course your lordship will be able to take which will enable Sir Kenneth Buchanan to be protected and at the same time enable you to discharge Dr. Moore. So do I. What actually is the state of play so far as these um, barriers are concerned? They seem to be shorter and composed of different objects, my lord. I see. <clears throat> Dr. Moore, you need not stand. Very well. I implore you to be kind to me. Dr. Moore, all you're being asked to do is to remove these pots and not put them back pending the trial of the action, which will decide which one of you is right. If you tell me you can do that, you can leave this court now. If I am told that I must answer yes or no, then I must say... I will not remove them. Is that yours? That's right. It is called a motorcycle, yes? Yes. Are there many in Russia? Quite a lot. I want to drive a machine like that. I must. Of course. Tell me how. You must join the motor club. And I did. I know. The only woman. Uh, the only one. I learned to ride a motorcycle quicker than anyone. I know. Quicker than anyone ever had. And in three months? 
riding in all Russian military motorcycle trials. And in six months? Motorcycle champion of all Russia. And in nine months? Elected Soviet Woman's Day heroine. Speed was my passion. Gliding, parachuting, flying, I did everything. I became famous throughout the country. I am prototype of new type of woman. Prototype of new type of human being. Prototype. 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 They will put you in prison. How can they? You knocked someone down, my dear. If they put me in prison, it will be because they will think I am an agent. I know. Stupid. Why don't you take your motorcycle and go out of Russia? But alive. You must divorce me. Barbara, you must. I said goodbye to that great man. That great, good, giant of a man. I was never to see Russia again. Or him again. Ever. Or the like again. Ever. You are Mr. Michael George Ashby. That is correct. You are a Harley Street consultant physician specializing in neurology. Yes. And Dr. Barbara Moore is in your care. That is correct. Tell me about her. Tell Court about her physical condition. It's causing me some concern. Why is that? I've warned her that going without fluids could be dangerous. I've tried to get her to change her mind about this. Successfully? I'm afraid not. And her mental state? Essentially normal, though perhaps somewhat eccentric. Does that apply in respect to the present litigation? I've been unable to obtain from her a reasonable degree of understanding. She can't discuss it without emotion and a sense of having suffered great wrong and persecution. You're very determined. Very. To finish this walk. But of course. Why? Why? Would you mind walking five feet behind me? Pardon? Five feet behind. Why? Because I ask. <laughs> but I won't be able to talk to you if I have I to walk... I walk alone. All my life, I walk alone. Do you think then that Dr. Moore, when the playthings, the pots, are taken away from her, may behave herself? I think that might very well be the result. She's not suffering from a mental illness, not one that you could put a name to. No, I don't think it would be fair to regard her as suffering from a persecution complex or anything that could be construed as such. Except, of course, in regard to this matter of the forecourt. Will she listen? Dr. Moore shows no sign of even being prepared to consider accepting any other view but her own. Like a child, it's a tantrum she's got into. And a short, sharp shock can sometimes stop a tantrum. Uh, her husband, Mr. Harry Moore, is in court, my lord. I suggest, perhaps... He could abate the nuisance. I don't know what his personal position is in relation to his wife. There is an injunction in Corinthians. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. I should have thought that in the vast majority of households in this kingdom, this particular problem would never have arisen. Why? Hmm? Will you smile? Remembering, we would never have met. No. Never had a lifetime together. That's right. Soulmates. How strange. Hmm? Really. That we should meet. Two people who felt the same. Destiny, you see. Because what did I do when I set foot on foreign soil? I drove straight off the boat on my motorcycle. Straight towards that city which 
guess I had heard of, but... But that's me, Harry. Straight. Straight into my destiny. I sit on my motorbike. Arms folded. Feet on the ground. One on either side of it. That's right. Thinking. Thinking. What to do? Yeah. And suddenly, there you were, staring at me. You look marvellous on your motorcycle with your black leathers and goggles. You were so handsome, so strong, so sure. Then, the lifelong vegetarian. vegetarian. <laughs> Though I didn't know it then, but... Destiny? Yes. Where are you going? Denver Street, in Chelsea. What a coincidence. So am I. And so it was. <laughs> it was true. My friends lived in the same house as your friends. <laughs> it was destiny. destiny. We saw so much of each other. No one else. No. Just the two of us. A young, idealistic Russian girl. Young English student, willing, wanting to worship at your feet. What a combination! Perfect. We found out about each other. Went to societies. Found out what we liked. Vegetarian societies. What we disliked. In talks. The many things we agreed about. About life force. The few things we disagreed about. And I found my destiny. And I found mine. For six months I saved and saved. Every hackney. To go to India. By motorcycle. Every inch of the way. Leaving me behind. I had to hurry. Really? I joined the school of yoga in Bombay. Spent all my days and all my nights. They taught me breathing and the exercises and the diet. I wrote to you regularly. I applied to join John Hunt's expedition of Everest, but they turned me down. Every month a letter. There were women's expeditions, but I did not apply. For four years? I could not climb with women, only with men. You never replied. You told me you wouldn't before you went. Then I decided to come home. Yeah. For a little while. To see me? To see my faithful Harry Moore. And then the telegram. I had to come. I was the only one who could save you. At the hospital, the doctors were despairing. Yeah. You were not getting better. No. Then I found out. No wonder you were not getting better. They were giving you meat. I was too weak to protest. Too weak to stop them. But I was not weak. No. I could stop them. No. I had to rescue you. That's right. So I kidnapped you. I smuggled me out. Out of that barbarous hospital. Out of the country. The Latin Quarter in Paris. No meat. No drugs. None of that poison. Just fresh fruit and vegetables. Honey. And water. And you got better. I got better. Oh. You were so dependent. So lost and so lonely. Yeah. So sad. Yeah. You were like a child. Yeah. For your sake, I agreed not to go back to India. But to stay here in England. Your need was so great that I suppose as a woman I had no choice. But what of my work? Every day I went and skated at Earl's Court. Recapturing your childhood. I skated and skated and skated. And slowly over the weeks Voices began to talk to me. 
Voices that told me I would succeed. Strength. Will. Power over myself. I propose to give you further time to get over your tantrums. If you cannot understand my explanation of the law of the land, you might take heed of a nursery warning which is frequently given to French children. Ne fais pas la comédie. The comedy has got to stop. And you, Dr. Moore, are going to stay in custody until you show signs of bringing down the curtain. She has threatened to kill herself by holding her breath if she was forcibly fed. To live on air. To achieve the ultimate. I will succeed. I will. I went to the Alps to continue my experiments. Yeah. Four months of walking, breathing the fresh, clean air. I ate nothing for months. That's right. I was fit and healthy and strong. I had proved my theories. You remember? You remember? Yeah. I contracted an illness. Yeah. You remember? Of course. Leukemia. <laughs> from drinking radioactive water from that Austrian spa. That's what it was. But what would people say? Oh, no. They would say she, she with her special diet. She was going to live forever. She was going to have a baby at a hundred. She has died like everybody else. Her theories are useless, useless. But I proved myself to be right. I proved myself to be right. I cured myself. Four years it took, but I cured myself. Now I must walk. I have proved my theories to myself. Now I must prove them to the whole world. I must prove that men and women can be perfect. I am 56. I am a woman. And I do not eat meat. Dr. Moore's tubs are removed. But who did it? Flower tubs in removal mystery. I moved the pots, says Dr. Babb's husband. I am rather apprehensive about what my wife will say when she finds out the tubs have been removed, but if she comes out of prison and puts them back on, surely we'll move them again. What made you defy the doctor, Mr. Wall? I know she'd given up hope. Now, that frightened me. I'd rather risk her wrath and try to keep her alive. This fast was doing her irreparable harm. I cannot remember the last time I gave him a kiss. I have not got time for that sort of thing. Now I'm going to put my foot down. To stand up for myself. Dr. Babs walks out on her husband. I love him. But it is the only possible way. Once the legal business has ended, I shall go away. Harry will go where he pleases, but it will not be with me. Harry is too upset to talk to you. Fruit juice woman aims at record. Dr. Moore completes 250 miles. Thousands cheer Dr. Baird. Dr. Moore, close to the border. Cheers, stairs, and carrots. Are you enjoying that, Dr. Moore? Orthodox cooked foods are contributory factor in disease and old age. And you expect to live to 150? Barring accidents. And have a baby when you're 100? On my diet, anything is possible. I can do miracles. Uh, it's not so ridiculous. Thank you, Doctor. But are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying that? Fabulous. Having fun? Is you poison yourself? <laughs> poison, Mr. Poison yourself. <laughs> I can't actually believe this. Animal is... protein is poison. <laughs> but I'm not dying. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> well, well, of course we all are. 
I know my philosophy. But what I mean is, I'm not actually killing over and expiring just because I'm eating a beef steak. The body is a wonderful instrument. In medieval days, in the great poisoning days. Abortions. In those, when people were desperately afraid of being poisoned, they would take a little bit of arsenic every day, just a little bit, and slowly build up the amount until the body learned to tolerate very large doses. Then if someone tried to poison them, the body could. But well, that's not the same as... Mm, yes, it is. The body, because it was being poisoned, and because it wanted to survive, learn to cope, admirably. That does not mean that our stick is not a poison, right? The babies are gradually weaned onto animal protein, dairy products, white bread, sugar. And the body, while it is slowly dying, gets used to the poisons. And in the end, wants and needs them. Just like smoking. How long did it take you to like smoking? One week? Two weeks? But at first it made you sick, yeah? <laughs> yeah. But you persevered with great tenacity and courage. Until not only could your body take cigarette smoke, but craved and needed it. Until now you cannot stop. I can stop. Well, of course you can. And I still don't accept that this is poison. Oh, of course you don't. When you are my age, you do what I am doing. By then I shall be nearly 70. And I shall still be you. <laughs> Dr. Moore, nearing 400 mile mark. Thousands greet Dr. Barbara. <laughs> Dr. Barbara Moore reached Lancaster last evening. She said she planned to be on the road again at 5 a.m. She was given a tumultuous welcome by thousands who lined her route. Dr. Barbara holds up housing scheme. Dr. Barbara Moore is asking for £3,500 damages to allow sewerage and drainage pipes to be laid through her land at Eastley Court, Frimley. This would put £10 on the cost of each house on the estate, and the firm principally concerned with the development said it was wrong for one woman to make buyers pay so much more. She's been offered £500. I bought that house specifically, and well you know. No one better. I bought that house specifically because of the land at the back. I wanted to build. And you know that, too. I do. I wanted to build a laboratory. A laboratory where I could continue my experiments into diet and its connection with disease. The offer from the developers was ridiculous. Shortly afterwards, my lord, Dr. Moore sought planning permission to erect in her garden a large outbuilding to be used for biological research. This was after the developers sought to run their sewers. Yes, my lord. And the result of her application? The council gave permission on condition that she did not erect the outbuilding within 10 feet of the proposed line of sewers. How could they dare to question my need for a laboratory? I don't know. I had proved, proved myself. You had. They must have known I was right. They must. I had saved your life. Cured yourself of leukemia. Walked from Birmingham to London. From Edinburgh to London. From John of Groats to Lenzent. And on top of that, on top of that, Terry! Six months later. Walked right across the United States of America. Over 3,000 miles. In 82 days! Dr. Moore has all America at her non-stop feet. Dr. Babs overtakes British sergeants who started the day before her. 
Dr. Barbara Moore halfway. The trucks rush by her in a scorching blast of exhaust fumes. She gestures imperiously as if it was to wave the nuisance away. An escort of city officials met Dr. Moore. They intended to walk with her the last three miles to Times Square. But they all dropped out on the way, unable to keep up. All that, Harry. And that 56. And on my diet. What else did I have to do to prove I was right? All I wanted was my laboratory. So that I could show the world that I was right. Is it true that she could build her laboratory over the sewers if she so wished? Yes. Provided that they are six feet deep. Dr. Moore, would that not satisfy you? No, it would not. May I ask why? I require a basement. To grow alfalfa. When the crowds are cheering her, she doesn't limp at all. Her shoulders are straight and her head held high. I find her a fascinating woman. When she wants to lie down on someone's floor, she simply goes and bangs on a door and asks. Everyone is delighted with her. Babs to finish walk today. Dr. Barbara Moore walking in England. Dr. Barbara Moore on the trucks I'm going to Marathon Dr. Babs will not budge on 3,500 pounds. Dr. Babs pleads with the housing minister. Dr. Moore writes to the Queen and Harold Wilson. I have heard nothing from either. The only thing now that will prevent me from taking my life is if the housing minister orders a public inquiry. What a woman. Even if she is a Russian, or as some say Italian, she has established herself as one of the great English eccentrics. While she waited for the decision, she walked through London, a small and desolate figure. Mr. Crossman rejects her request. Now I must go home and make final preparations. After tonight, I'm finished. I must go home and give last instructions to my husband and swear an affidavit. It is unfair to leave everything to him. Dr. Barbara Moore, 61 years old, is in court today accusing a dustman of hitting her. Unprecedented situation, says the judge. For seven years, the council has been unable to lay sewers. Dustman and council tell of troubles with Dr. Moore. Russian-born 63-year-old Dr. Barbara Moore told magistrates today Litigation of various issues have been stretching over a decade. Emotional strain of years of litigation. 68-year-old Barbara Moore was accused of shoplifting today. Could I touch your hand? Why? My wife. She's sick. Very ill. I am sorry. If I can touch your hand, I mean, touch her with the same hand. She admires you so much. Dr. Barbara Moore continues her 10-year fight for her home. Dr. Moore sent to prison again for contempt. Babs loses sewer appeal. Dr. Moore calls council decision a farce. The council had no right. Oh, dear. 60,000 pounds it cost me. In the house. Yes, dear. There is no justice. No, dear. This is our life.
by Dr. Babs Harry. I knew within 48 hours that I was in love with her. Said Harry Moore to me yesterday. Well, maybe love is not the word. It was a kind of affinity. We had so much in common. She was mad about motorcycles, and so was I. She was a vegetarian, and so was I. She was interested in art. I was an art student in Chelsea. We agreed on so much. On the intimate things, too. Our marriage, for instance, is platonic. Do you understand that? I've heard people say such marriages don't exist, but it is true. Sex has never played any part in our lives. The mastery of sex is one of Barbara's major sources of power. It's Bravo Barbara. <laughs> Dr. Barbara makes it. Dr. Babs is there. Dr. Babs lost her will to live. Her last years saddened by her many legal defeats. She lost her faith in English justice. All of Cornwall was out to greet the gallant little lady as she finished her marathon walk that had captured the imagination of the whole country. It has taken her 23 days. And I, for one, never had any doubt that Dr. Babs would do it. Battling Dr. Barbara Moore has died after she willed herself into the grave because Britain let her down, a friend said yesterday. She was determined to die. She wanted to end her life this way. But she will always be remembered in popular histories of the swinging 60s. And perhaps that was the fame she most wished for. Dr. Barbara Moore finished her astounding 1,000-mile walk. All Britain knew they had a unique woman in their midst. In fact, there is no one in the whole world like her. And her life story, told by herself, is a topsy-turvy affair of romance and thrills that will stagger ordinary people. Why does she stand on her head? How has she arrived at her strange philosophy of love? Read the story of that crazy woman and find out. This hotel, the remotest, most isolated hotel in Britain. They've never seen anything like this before here. Never. She's moving forward to the floodlights of all the cameras. Bloom's going up. Here we go. She's going into the hotel. I can't get close. There's such a crowd. She's going in, walking into the hotel. She's being pushed in with this vast crowd. She is indeed a, a most remarkable woman. <laughs> 